welcome, Hiya. Doctor Totally. Did you see the last episode of Doctor Who? How cool. Professor Lazarus turning into that monster, mm -hmm. making himself younger in the big machine, in a Lazarus machine. Have you heard of it? You know why there's smoke in the studio? Just there. I'm going to make myself younger. I'm going to do it. No, no, because remember what happened to the professor in the end. That's not a good plan, really. What, the monster thing and going yeah. around and biting people? Yeah, it's a risk worth taking. No, Brian, I wouldn't, I really. I want to be young but... again and take on Wayne Rooney. I can oh. be the next contender for United. Easy. Oh. Are you OK? <gasps> Barney? I feel like a new man. How do I look? Um, smaller, but strangely not that much smaller. Oh, and your hair's still rubbish. Watch it, you. I'm not having any more of your cheek. Just a second. I'm not putting up with this for the whole show. Get back in there, you whippersnapper. Give the titles. Kirsten made me change back to normal. I was really looking forward to reliving those glory days. Having said that, the fact that I might turn into a crazed monster at any point might have had something to do with it. Anyway, today's show is a semi-fantastic, bombastic one. It's all about the Joneses. We're going to catch up with Tish, Francine Clive, and, of course, the gorgeous Martha Jones. But the excitement doesn't stop there, oh, no. Because you can win yourself some top prizes in Who Goes There. We'll also be finding out how the two teams are getting on in Team Totally. Today is a magazine challenge. We'll also be finding out how the Doctor and Martha are getting on in the Doctor Who animation. I'm meeting a very special guy who is the Doctor Who monster creator called Barney Kernel. How does that sound, guys? Do we like it? Wicked! Now, you are looking right now at some very smiley faces who are all the Jones family's biggest fans. Am I right? Yeah! I've got a very special treat for you now because Kirsten is backstage with two of them. I'm quite literally trying to keep up with the Joneses. They're on the move. They're just moving all the time. Ladies, stop! Stop, stop, stop. Hello. Can I come at you? Hello. Hello, hello. Uh, we've got Ajoa and we've got Gugu, who, of course, plays sister and mum of That's the right. lovely Martha yeah. Jones. Uh, now, I want to start with you. What were you thinking of in episode six, almost kissing that professor? I know, I know. Who could have uh, thought it was uh, a nightmare? I think it was because he, um, we had no idea that he was going to turn into such a horrible kind of guy. He seemed really nice to begin with. And he was my new boss, so I wanted to make a good impression. <laughs> it's not it's excusable. Is it? New job, I'll kiss you. No, no. no nice boss, I know. I'll it was kiss a you. Bit, uh, a little bit I uh, didn't desperate. raise the light. No, that, no. <laughs> well, you <laughs> are quite a firm mum, aren't you? Because I am you, firm. You weren't happy fair. about the doctor. No, I was yeah. not. So, would you meet Mrs. Jones? Heard a lot about you. Have you? What have you heard, then? Well, you know, that you're Martha's mother, and... Um... You think your daughter's being led astray by the bad man? You think he's the bad man? You've got to give him a... <laughs> oh, I'm getting scared here. I'm, I'm quite frightened of you. Because you're quite a bickery family. Uh, uh, bickery? Well, we, we say what we feel, don't we? Mm. It's a kind of... Well, it does you, explode occasionally, yeah. but we try and kind of keep the peace. I think yeah. it's the parents yeah. that often explode. Actually, that's true. Yeah, I think yeah. the children are fairly peacemaker yeah. types, mm. and it's the parents who are like... Would you rather be in Martha's position, do you think? If what? you had the chance to go off with the Doctor? Well, I think we, we don't really know much about the Doctor at this stage, so um, he's just this, you know, mystery new uh, new boyfriend, we guess. We're not sure what's what's going on, so... Mm. Um, so, yeah, Tish doesn't really know how, how the whole time-travelling thing... <laughs> and are you going to start liking him a bit more? Because right. he's nice. Oh, I don't know, maybe it's for right. Some, but, you know, at the moment, he's, got he's just dodgy. Himself, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dodgy. As far as I'm concerned, he's still dodgy. <laughs> he's a little bit dodgy. dodgy. <laughs> my, my Martha rings me on a regular basis. She's a good daughter. She keeps in touch. And all of a sudden, phew, meets this man, she's off. Dodgy it, things happen. Well, I won't be doing my job properly mm. unless I try to grill you to within an inch of your life for more information. A totally exclusive. Got anything you can tell us? Uh, looks sealed, I'm afraid. Oh. My paper and pen, you could draw something. Others have done this successfully, oh, and then you're not actually saying it, are you? Who's the good drawer? <laughs> Who's going to go for it? Oh, I'm the oh, bad drawer. Go for it. It's ask freezing my, out here as well, isn't it? my art teacher. Oh, you've got the big coats on, okay, you've got the right well, idea here. Right, what is this? It looks like um, um, sheep droppings bubbles? at this point. What is that? Sheep droppings, um, a type of chocolate. Oh, are they? Um, <laughs> exploding <laughs> marbles. <laughs> That's quite good. Is it? That yeah. means it, nothing It might to mean me. something they look like if plums. you stay with the show to the very end. <laughs> really? <laughs> plums? Is that a clue? Oh, no, 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 they look like plums. No. Oh, there's a big reason. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Barn, have you got any idea? 
Do you know what? I have absolutely no idea what that might be. Any ideas here? No. no. Do we think the doctor's going to be attached by bagels with no holes? <laughs> it's very strange, isn't it? I'm very glad that uh, it's not down to them to be part of Team Totally this week, because it's all about designing the magazine layout, and uh, I really don't think their pictures are up to scratch. You'll see why. Here's Team Totally. Welcome to Team Totally. Competing are Team Time Lord. They are... Cody. She loves swimming. Alia. He enjoys playing football. And Sarah. She supports Liverpool FC. Competing against Team Time Lord are Team TARDIS. They are... Chris. His hobby is reading. Molly. She has singing lessons. And Daniel. He likes playing computer games. For 12 weeks, our teams have had the opportunity to take away two points for winning a task and one point for being runners-up. The team with the most points will win a money-can't-buy Doctor Who experience. Who will win? Only time will tell. With just one point between the two teams, who will take the lead as the children arrive at Doctor Who HQ to take part in a magazine challenge, which will be set by magazine editor Murray Lang. The most difficult thing about my job is deadlines. You can come up with hundreds of ideas, uh, you can write loads of words, but if you don't allow yourself enough time to create the page, you're just going to end up with a, a blank page. Hi, team. Hi. Today's task is to do a teaser page for episode six, The Lazarus Experiment. In the episode, the Doctor and Martha meet Professor Lazarus, who's created this machine which can make people younger. But things don't go quite according to plan. Um, you've got the whole story here, so it's a simplified version of the story. But when you're doing your page, you don't want to give the whole plot away. So I want you to pick the most exciting bits to tease the audience, make them want to watch the episode. When you're creating magazines, you have to work to a deadline. You've got 30 minutes to put this page together. The teams are separated into two rooms and each have a summary of the episode plot and a selection of photos to use. The doctor takes Martha back home to the evening after the first time. After reading the story of the Lazarus experiment, the two teams both begin by looking for a large central picture for their pages. Start with that one. So, are we sure, is are that, we sure about that Doesn't one? that need to fill the page? Like, um, yeah. no, because then we can oh, yeah. overlap. Look, do you think the top picture should be? I think it should be, be a, the machine or this. Yeah, because Martha's first visit back home, so she should have a picture of her family, um, like, and a big title. Martha comes back home. Can we put Martha's family comes into play in the middle? Yeah. Team Time Lord are building up their page layout well, whereas Team TARDIS are losing time still trying to choose their main picture. Yeah, okay, no, no, if we move it like that, Martha's home. Yeah, yeah. But is she safe? Right, who is this mystery man and what, um... Don't reveal what, what he's saying to Martha's mum. Just, yeah, just like, like, what is just, he... And what's he saying to Martha's mum? As Team Time Lords struggle to come up with a heading for one of their pictures, Team TARDIS have finally chosen some photos and begun to put their page together. No, but does But how carefully have they thought no, about the layout? Not this. Take that out. That's too crowded, though, because... It's like you've got three pictures in the okay. like desert. Okay, before and uh, after. Okay, can Guys, I do that? Guys, let's pull this down a bit because we need to put information under you. So, some kind of... Not all the not way around. Not all the way around. Uh, like little sparks, like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alia, Cody and Sarah are adding a few final splashes of colour to brighten up their page, while Molly, Chris and Daniel are trying to see what's missing from theirs. How are we going to make it, like, so it doesn't look boring? Because at the moment it just looks yeah, like... Yeah, put more colours on it and stuff, you know? OK, I think... No, the no it no. doesn't need... Stop. ...colours. It needs more okay. information. We should have discussed it a teeny bit more because... Yeah. Yeah, we were just slapping it on yeah, randomly. Yeah, I, mean, I do agree with I that. I think it's everyone's fault. With the 30-minute no, deadline almost up, things aren't looking good for the disappointed Team TARDIS. And in the final few seconds, Team Time Lord have some last-minute inspiration. Like that. <laughs> okay, team, put your pencils down. Time's up. So look. Okay, let's bring the other team in and see how they got on as well. Okay. The challenge is over. Team TARDIS had a slow start and there were mixed reactions to the end result. Well, I'm happy with 
all of it. I'm happy with the colours, but the boys didn't seem too pleased, but I'm really happy with it. Team Time Lord planned their page carefully, making sure it was a team effort. I'm positive that we are all happy with, with the design and that we don't want to change any major things. Who will win? Stay tuned to find out later. Front page, they're getting a bit competitive, aren't they? Find out how that magazine challenge goes a little bit later on. Now, though, it's time for Who Goes the Sorry. What he's trying to say is it's your Chase chance to get yourself one of these. It's one of our Totally Sweatshirts. Beautifully modelled there, guys. Thank you very much. It's gorgeous, that. Thank you. So, all you've got to do is guess what Doctor Who monster is behind this screen. You're not going to see the actual monster, because that would be dead easy. So it's yeah. a silhouette. Let's have a look, shall we? Lights, please. What have okay. you got for us? There we go. Wow. Oh. Um, OK, it's very tall. He is very quite tall. short in real life. Yeah, he's very tall. He's got some weird sort of bone-like things attached to him, and he brought right. this with him as well. Wow, that's actually quite heavy. Ah, Does that right. give you more of a clue? Does yes, that... I'm starting to see what I think that might be. I think but it's a cello. are you, if you can work it out, you can write to us with your answer, the address is on your screen, or you could email us totallydoctorwho at bbc.co.uk. Good luck. Now, if your names are going across the bottom of the screen right now, congratulations, you've won yourself one of these. It is a totally sweatshirt. Hurrah! Thank you very much. I'll hang on to that. I think, oh, we know what, what that is for. I didn't do that it. means it wasn't me. it's time for another exclusive. And this time it's more from our anime. Should we get a bit of quiet for this? It's quite okay. serious. There's quite hold a lot. Hold on, hold on, girl throw. Very nice. I did the sound effects as well. Okay, then, so. You ready for the Doctor Who animation? The Doctor and Martha have found the first data chip, and that has led them to the planet Maya, right? Mm -hmm. They're now after the Infinite, which is kind of a starship, which gives them their heart's desire. And they need the second data chip before their old foe, Balthazar, gets it. But they're in a little bit of a pickle because they've just been attacked by a swarm of huge flying bugs. Here's episode six. <laughs> So that's settled then. It doesn't matter where the Doctor and Martha go, trouble seems to follow them. And even bugs are getting in on the act now. What's that all about? Now, I have to say, I'm in a particular predicament myself because there's a bit of a scary monster behind me. Take a look at that. Oh, yeah. And that is one scary monster, of course, you saw in the last episode. Professor Lazarus kept mutating into that one. And the man who's behind this is Barney Kurnow, who's sat right here. How are you doing, Barney? All right? Very good, thanks. Yeah. You're in charge of all the CGI effects and everything. So how do you bring a monster like that to life? Well, to start with, we've got some guys that, uh, that like to draw monsters. Yeah. So we get the script and get, get them to draw, draw some sketches and then it gets run past uh, the producers and everybody till we come up with a final design. And then they build the 3D model and, 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 and animate it from there. And it's down to you to do that then at the end of it? Yes. OK, Rebecca has a question. Hi, Rebecca. What does CGI stand for? It stands for Computer Generated Imagery, which means anything that's made in the computer rather than shot with the camera. So with it being made in a computer, I'm presuming that's done afterwards, is it? So when you film a scene, the monster isn't actually there? No, it's not there. So let's take, for example, the scene in St Paul's Cathedral, where the two Jones sisters are screaming at the top there. What are they looking at? If there's no monster there, what are they actually acting with? Well, uh, on that day, I got a, uh, a long stick with a little green ball on it, which I painted a little face on them. OK. Um, so so that they know what to look at, so they're all looking at the same point. So when we put the monster in, they're actually looking at the monster. So how does it work? How does the process work? You've got the film on tape, you've got the Jones Sisters in St Paul's Cathedral, no monster, but it's your job to put the monster on there afterwards. So how do you yeah. do that? Well, we, when we get the footage, the 3D animators, will, uh, they'll animate the, the, the monster to that given shot and with the camera looking in the right direction. And then from there, they, they'll render it out as, a, as a, another, another piece of uh, you know, action. And then they composite the two together. But of course, uh, that will all be scripted, won't it? You will know where the monster's going to be, because of course, where the actors are reacting to. Yeah, yeah. Very clever. Um, Dylan, do you have a question? Out of all the monsters you've created, what's your favourite? I think it would have to be the werewolf. Yeah, particularly special that one, wasn't it? How long yeah. did that take to create? Uh, it, it takes quite a while from the from the start, from building it, and then from you know from going through the shoot and then getting the plates and then compositing it. it takes a good couple of months. And the compositing is sort of it's a building process. So you have like a cause it's called a wireframe, isn't it? You get the idea of where it's going to be first, and then you put things on afterwards to make it look more realistic. Yeah, well that's that's in, in the 3D process. We, we we start off with a wireframe, a basic model like the grey ones that you've seen. Them. And yeah. the early animations, and then they render it out as a, as a as a flat thing, which we put onto the other flat thing, which is the the, the footage that we shot on tape. I love learning about stuff like this. It's great, isn't it? And especially monsters. In fact, we have our very own monster here. She's called Kirsten O'Brien, and I think she's behind the scenes somewhere. Kirst, 
Well, Barn, I've snuck out onto set. I've got to watch all the wires here. They're filming in there. Now, I've done this because I've heard that Trevor, in fact, I can see him. Trevor is here. Hello. Hello nice Kirsten. to see How you. you? Yeah, I'm oh, very good. well, thank you. So, Trevor mm. plays Clive, mm. who is, of course, Martha's, uh, dad. Martha's dad. Yeah. Are you going to come back in then? Are we going to see you in a future episode? Well, I can't speak too much about it, but when the, um, you know, chips are down, they'll call for Clive. Yeah. <laughs> and as actors, do you all get on? You know, oh, when yeah, you're hanging like out it. on set. Like a house on fire. Lovely people. I mean, I should be so lucky to have such beautiful children. Because Reggie's a mate of mine, you know. Oh, you can't diss the Reg. I would never diss Reggie. <laughs> He's a very funny man, you know, and uh, very tall as well, actually. He is, isn't he? And good looking. Um, uh, he was good looking. Yes, well, I mean, I wouldn't know. Yeah, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. I'm holding good. this ridiculously, but this is it? for our wall of fame. We need you to put your handprint in there, please, handprint, and then we're going to yeah. give it away. It's oh, our competition. Oh, oh, so yeah, we'll press in. Press. That's it, and I'll squash on top as well. We go for it. Press. Press as hard as you can. Ooh, there we go. And ooh. if you can sign it as sign well, oh, right. that'd be brilliant. Thank I'll you very much. I'll just, just write, I write my real name on my character. Isn't it? My real name, isn't it? Oh, go on then. Yeah. Mm. Oh, should I write Clive then? Write them both. Oh, write oh, both. Right, I'll get this right. sorted out, Barn, and we'll get it back to the studio. Yeah, please do, Kirst. Then we can stick it up here on the Doctor Who Wall of Fame and then give you the chance to win all of these handprints at the end of the series. Now, to do that, you have to answer 12 questions. So far, you've had five. You're now about to hear the sixth. We're going to get some lights down, some tension music, and Sophia, it's all over to you. Question six. What does the Doctor call the sequence of numbers that Riley and Martha use when breaking the trip code? Oh, look at that scary face. What a lovely smile. There you have it, the sixth question. If you want to catch up with any that you might have missed, just go to the website. I've got it. There it is, it can go on the wall. Oh, with brilliant. The others. Hey, and guess what? You're just in time for Team Tothy as well. Oh, We're now about to find out who has won the magazine challenge. What do you reckon? Who's going to win it? Team Tardis. Team Tardis? Team Time Lord. Really? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is to watch it. Here is Team Tothy. <laughs> Team TARDIS and Team Time Lord were challenged to put together a teaser page for a magazine, previewing the episode The Lazarus Experiment. Team TARDIS talked a lot, but didn't think about their layout enough. It doesn't need stop colours, it needs more information. Team Time Lord made sure their decisions were a team effort and thought about things carefully. Right, who is this mystery man? Don't reveal what he's saying to Martha's mouth. With the judges' decision imminent, did the teams find the task difficult? It was quite hard to do it within a time limit because we still thought that there was blank paper which we could fill in. At the moment, the odds, I think, are adding up to that they might win, just pull over us, but I'm hoping that we're going to win. Welcome back, team. Hi. I'm going to talk you through what I liked about it. Team TARDIS, you decided to choose three main pictures. You had a nice cutout. That's quite fun. I like the... The questions on here, like, who is Mr Saxon? Martha is home, but is she safe? That's really good. It's really exciting to get the reader involved in that. But there's still a lot of sense of fun here, and you still get the idea of what the page is about. Team Time Lord, I like the fact you chose uh, a large central image of Martha and her family and the, and the Doctor. The, the posh coming from Lady, Lady Thor, thought that was, that was funny. And lots of, lots of questions, again, to, to lead the reader in. It's a fun page. So I suppose you'd like to know who the, the winners are. Yeah. yeah. And the winning team is... Team Time Lord. Yeah. When I found out we didn't win, I wasn't really that surprised because um, we did actually rush it and it wasn't fantastic. I feel great that we won because I especially want to win this one. I think it was one of the tasks that I've most enjoyed. You win some, you lose some. Halfway through the competition, and our teams are drawing on nine points each. Tune in next time to find out who'll take the next two points and step into the lead. Oh, well done to Team Time Lord. So they've brought the scores back and they're now drawing. Anything could happen from here. Make sure you're watching next time. Now, we couldn't do a show today about the Joneses without speaking to the main lady herself. So we're now about to go over to the beautiful, the gorgeous, the exquisitely talented, I mean, the most impressive person on TV. And I think Kirsten's there as well. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you, Barney. Do you like that? He loves you, really. <laughs> the love hate thing going on. Um, you look beautiful in that last episode. I'm not surprised he gave you that big build. You were all in your evening wear. Do you know it was so nice to get to wear something different? I mean, I love Martha's 
classic look, if you like, but um, it was just so lovely to put on that lovely evening dress and, uh, and sort of flounce around. It just feels nice. I've never seen Reggie look so smart either. He scrubbed up well, didn't he? Yeah, everyone everyone looked ready to go out. And actually, we, we were out all night, but not because we were going anywhere, but because we were doing night shoots. So, um, ah, that was all filmed through the night. We were, How yeah. are they? Are they exhausting? They, around about two, three o'clock in the morning, you start to see people glazing over a little bit. <laughs> um, and then you just power through and five o'clock and you go home. Was it nice to have your family around, to have, not your real family, obviously, but your TV family to hang out with? It was really lovely. It was such a, a warm, sort of comforting feeling as well. But when, when we are all together, it's just, a riot. You know, there's always so much talking and laughing and so many pearls of wisdom and, and, and ideas. And so it's, it's really a, a good time to be around them. Do you tend to have sort of your family roles as you would in real life? You know, do you tend to bow down to the lady that plays your mum and, you know, take the mick out of Reggie because he's younger than you, all of that kind of thing? Yeah, it was funny because when we all first met in episode one, um, someone came over and said, look, you're all like a family already. I can imagine you at Christmas dinner because we were sat around this table and there was that banter going on and it was very much the sibling banter and then the, it was different with the parent banter. So you've got the dodgy habits then, come on, spill. Oh, dodgy habits. Um, at your likes on the night shoots, likes to eat chunks of brie. Oh. Um, and she'll eat, she'll eat it like a cake, and, and it made it look so good. Everyone was queuing up for a fight. So um, first everyone was like, oh, you can't eat that this time of night. Can we have some? <laughs> I want to ask you about looking scared on an episode like that, because we've already spoken to Barney that does the CGI effects, and he's yeah. told us that you're just looking at a tennis ball. I know. A green tennis ball. The thing is, my only experience of CGI up until then was in episode one, where we stood in front of a green screen looking at the moon. But you didn't have to do anything, you just had to look out of the moon. So I thought, oh, green screen's easy. Is this all that it involves? Then comes, just go, oh! And then comes episode six, where you had to run for your life, and you know, you're, you're, you're in fear of, of everybody's well being because there's a tennis ball bobbing around. <laughs> you know, and you can for a moment think, this is surreal and I'm going to laugh, but everyone is so. 100% on it that you will end up looking like the foolish one if you don't give it 100%. Because really? everyone believes that that tennis ball is going to kill you, and when everyone's got that sort of energy, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to, you know, whisk along with it. So it gets so easier. You don't get the giggles ever. No, well, everyone gets the giggles sometimes. <laughs> It's, a, it's, it's good to giggle, but, um, but the work gets done. Because <laughs> you know when I'd be giggling, if I was squashed up that close to David in the scene where you stuck together in the that machine. That's quite funny. And I love the way it was filmed as well, because we're all kind of a bit, like, angled, aren't we? Yeah. And it all looks really quite comedy. Um, yeah, no, we did giggle a bit, but the thing is, we had to cheat it. We weren't actually that close. There was much, plenty of room all around us, so... And then they were like, when he bent down, now you've got to kind of get your leg over his head to make sure that it looks really squashed. There was a bit of twister going on, and we did laugh a bit. But um, and I think he might have got a little electric shock at one point, which made me laugh. Oh, poor David. Oh, my word. Now, <laughs> would you do the honour of introducing a sneak peek of the next episode for us while you're here? Yes. Um, coming up is an exclusive look at the next episode of Doctor Who, which is... Um, all about a ship on a collision course with the sun and uh, watch out for Martha's uh, sneaky little peek of her own at the end. <laughs> this is Med Centre. Urgent assistance requested. Urgent assistance. Stay here, keep working. Urgent assistance. Abby, they're on their way. What's happening to you? Burn with me. Burn with me. Captain? I told you to say in engineering. I only take orders from one person around here. Oh, is he always this cheery? Elvis. What? Really? Elvis? Burn with me. Cohen, oh, you're sick. What's going to happen? The Doctor and Martha are getting closer and closer to the sun. Might get a good sun time, but how are they going to get out of that one? <laughs> We've run out of time for today. Well, thanks very much oh, yeah. to all our guests. We've chatted with Joneses and Barney. Thanks. Not you, uh, CGI expert. Bye. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.